Welcome to Below the Line, where we talk about working in Hollywood from the crew perspective. My name is Skid. I'm a former assistant director and your host. Here at Below the Line, our coverage of the Oscars rolls on. All month, I'm hosting panels of film industry professionals to discuss the nominees and their category of expertise. And this is the fifth of 10 episodes. Today, we're talking about sound, and I've got two returning guests. Steve Morrow, you've been a production sound mixer for 30 years, and your credits include La La Land, A Star is Born, and Ford versus Ferrari. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And Don Sylvester, you've been a sound editor for over 30 years yourself, with credits including Walk the Line, The Hate You Give, and also Ford versus Ferrari. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Listeners, if you're curious to learn more about the credits of my guests, go to imdb.com. The podcast has its own page, so if you search for Below the Line, it's easier to click through the names of our guests and see what else they've done. Okay, we're off to the races. The five films nominated for sound for 2022 are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar, The Way of Water, The Batman, Elvis, and Top Gun Maverick. We're going to discuss them in that order, and spoilers are possible, so consider this a warning. I also say this every time, but it bears repeating. We like to recognize our below-the-line compatriots by name, even if it means I'm occasionally mispronouncing some of them. Apologies in advance. Now, Linda ears. First up, All Quiet on the Western Front, and the nominated team is Victor Prasil, Frank Cruz, Marcus Stemmler, Lars Ginzel, and Stefan Court. Gentlemen, take it away. I mean, talk about a movie in the mud. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I saw that movie and I thought whoever survived making that film just deserves an award, just, you know, maybe a participation award, but like an award that, I mean, you survived that, that I just watched that movie. I thought the making of this had to be as hard as that looks, it looks cold, wet, damp. But I thought that movie wise, it was, um, you know, sounded incredible. And the the score on top of the sound of the film was really impactful. You know, because when that score came up for the first time with that, I don't know, electric guitar, it was just like, uh, my mind was blown. Not sure if it was an electric guitar, but that's what it felt <laughs> like. But yeah, what a brutal, brutal story to take on. And and I thought they did a great job. And, you know, the sound was, uh, was you know, is an epic, you know, war film sound. Just intense. And you felt the tanks coming. We've talked before on this show about that mix between sound and score, and they're nominated for original score as well. And so I'm curious to hear also, Don, your thoughts on that and and to dive a little deeper. I felt this was a really strong performance by these sound dudes. Um, Maybe they're not dudes, but yeah, they are. I thought it was really strong in every way. I thought it was very powerful. You know, it really evoked the idea of what it's like to be there. I find that to be the number one criteria for good sound if it takes you to a place that you've never been and you feel like you're there i buy into that i mean they had a lot of great sounds that are not only in their face but constantly going on in the background it's unrelenting uh when you're in the war you were there 24 hours a day and they also had some quiet moments what i like about it is the, the dynamics that they exhibited in in a, in a war setting is always very powerful and it's strictly limited to this character uh his point of view so a lot of this stuff is is dangerous but distant and you still you still get creeped out by the fact that that could be coming any any moment in your direction the music itself was added a great deal in my opinion the music really helped set the tone which music does of course good music yeah it added to the somber feel of the place um and i thought uh they are a great pair together. They hand it off to each other a lot. The music did a lot of that, you know, because it's like, where, where do you differentiate sometimes between the, the mix and the score? And, and this one did a good job kind of kind of lending itself to both. But it did a lot of, of lifting as well, you know. People say when they find out we do sound for films, they go, well, I like that music. And it's, you know, you run into the same sort of turf when you're, in a film and, and the music is powerful and the sounds are powerful and, and they blend together and people sometimes don't know the difference between them and here's a good example of how they worked well together yeah i would say all quiet is probably my favorite so far um it's it's definitely my one of my favorite films of the year when i saw it i, I couldn't stop talking about it at work i told everybody at work you gotta see this movie 
and the end is just brutal. Just brutal. Yeah. And it's great if you speak German. <laughs> which I don't. But. Which, I, which I do. I do. And I was... Oh, very you know, good. In the current project I'm working on, there's a lot of German. So my German juices were flowing. And so this comes on and went, great. I get to do German at home now. Ich spreche nur ein bisschen Deutsch. Ah, uh, ausgezeichnet. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's good to pick up... Did either of you have a chance to see it in the theater? Because I kind of put it off, not wanting to watch it on the side as a Netflix streamer until I could really get my full attention. And then when I did, um, I'm hoping that before the Oscars come out, there will be another theatrical release because I'd love to see it on the big screen and fully surrounded by the yeah. sound. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, I, I saw that at home in, in Dolby Atmos, but that was, you know, it's not going to compare to the theater experience. We sound guys all put a fortune into our screening rooms at home. So we feel like we don't have to see it in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Well, next time one of you guys can host and we'll watch them all. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll put a bit of that for next year. Moving on to our second film, Avatar, The Way of Water. And the nominated team is Julian Holworth, Gwendolyn Yates Whittle, Dick Bernstein, Christopher Boys, Gary Summers, and Michael Hedges. I gotta say, Julian's a good guy. Uh, had a lot of conversations with him. He's a, you know, was on that film for two years, and uh, worked with James Cameron. So he, um, you know, I'm sure went through it, you know, because that's not a easy film probably to constantly stay engaged with when you're on it for two years. So I think that that's you know at least on the production side of it, you know. So that was, and then they had water tanks to deal with and underwater sound. I had a conversation where they, you know, would dive underwater mic'd up and then they would burst through the surface of the water and it, the mics had to work, you know, as soon as they came through the water. So they had some technical challenges that they had to, you know, prepare for and, and come through on, uh, you know, the movie like that, where it's a lot of it is, you know, it's, it's on stage and recreated. So it's a lot of more of the sound editing side than the production side, but he was able to capture it all, which was, you know, impressive because there's a lot going on there, a lot of technology going on, which is not always quiet. Let me ask you, Steve. So, when you've got a production like this, it, it's really kind of unique. It looks to the final version as if it's animated. Yeah. But it's not. I mean, it is, it is, but it's it's originally shot as actors on a, on a stage and, they, and they're mic'd up and they're reacting to each other and they're, and they're running and jumping and, as you say, even swimming, right? So yep. it's not an animated feature. That's right. Which makes it then, I think, viable for this category because what I don't like and I've mentioned this before, is I feel that the animated movies have a greater advantage to having a good sounding soundtrack because they don't have to clear away all the ambient noise and all the you know other things that are that are recorded during production. I mean, the, the animated sound is just in a in a studio to begin with. And so so this was like on the very edge of me saying, well, maybe this is treated like an animated film i mean i think you're definitely right on the you know sound design of it all because you're you're right i mean you're you're dealing with tracks that are probably pretty clean and able to get you know booms in wherever you want and things like that but you i i do think that you you know there's probably the technical challenge of you know they're wearing these outfits that are you know cabled up and they're on stages that have you know cameras everywhere that you know there may be more ambient noise than it appears you know, and then you you have scenes where they're you're they're yelling outside, but they're probably indoors on a on a motion capture stage. So there's there's probably some work to do to make that sound like they're outside versus just in a box. But yeah, I mean, it's an impressive feat if you can trick the audience into thinking they're in the middle of the ocean on a foreign planet. You know, without it seeming like oh they're on a soundstage box. Right. Well, as all our sound editors will agree, water is difficult. It's very harsh and brittle at, at times. Uh, also, it's very, it's very samey. So to cut anything in water that makes it feel like you're actually in the water is really impressive. And this is full of water yeah. and water sound effects. And the guys that cut that stuff, they were not in water, I assume. <laughs> no, so, I don't think so. <laughs> so it's all pretty good stuff. And so I think they get a high mark for, I mean, they do, they do great work. Uh, I think this was done in um, New Zealand post-wise mm -hmm. and, and they do great work and everything sounds really great the question is is it the greatest and the only way we can determine whether it's the greatest sound this year is to destroy all the others and figure out what <laughs> remains that's right <laughs> yeah but right now i can't destroy any of these right uh because i think uh the way the water was pretty darn good 
Yeah, I would agree. And I give it really high marks. Although yeah, I, it's a good sounding movie. I don't know where we rank on our list here. Yeah, it's it's in it's in my top five for this year. <laughs> for sound or for movies in general? Steve, no, no, for sound, for like, sound, for, for sound. For the Oscar nominees. <laughs> this is what you're yeah, Oscar top nominees. Five. It's in my top five. <laughs> I have a question, gentlemen. I haven't been following the sort of behind the scenes with the sound category. I was surprised, and I don't know if I've ever seen six names nominated as a team. And so, I, again, we didn't read all the specific titles because it's just a lot of word jumble, and oftentimes they're wrong anyway on IMDb. That being said, does it seem unusual that so many people would be put forward on a single film? I don't think so. I mean, I think if you have, you know, I mean, it's a movie that took them years to make, so maybe there was you know, 50, 50, you know, coordination between, I, I'm just not sure how many, but I know that when the Academy combined it, there was the, the nervousness of saying, well, what if you, what if we have this person, do we all get the same amount of trophies if we win? And I think that that's the answer. So. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're seeing what used to be two categories of uh, sound and I guess sound mixing and sound editing, I guess they're together now. Yeah. I think Don, you won the last award. I broke it. <laughs> you broke it. So now you own it. And they said, look, if, you're, if we're giving this guy an award, this, that's really seemed to be a very... <laughs> <laughs> My reverse was, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don won and we didn't for mixing us. Can we combine them so that we have a chance next time? For my situation, it was a, it was a shame that, that the ones that are now combined didn't each win. And that's probably the problem with the, the having the two different categories is you didn't know which category... Was the sound you're hearing? Was it were you hearing mixing? Were you hearing sound editing? Do you, I mean, so it made sense on one level to combine them, but then at the same time, they should have given us both the Oscars. And we're talking about <laughs> Ford versus Ferrari, for which you are both oh, yeah. nominated, but in separate oh, yeah, categories yeah. for listeners yeah, who aren't right, aware. Right, right. Well, it does make for easier podcast scheduling now that there's just uh -huh. a category in sound. So I <laughs> I didn't have anything to do with the decision, but you know, again, but you benefit from it. Here. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, the third film on our list is The Batman, and the nominated team is Stuart Wilson, William Files, Douglas Murray, and Andy Nelson. That was a fun movie, you know? It's like uh, DC reinvented the, just starting, you know, we don't get to see where he came came from. We kind of all know that backstory, so it's a, it's a fun movie to jump right in the middle of his um, character and figure out who's with them and who's against them. But no, that's a, that's a heavy, um, there's a lot of sound, the wall of sound in that movie, which is which is well done because it doesn't tire you out, but great action, fun, fun sequences. You know, it's Batman in the rain in the dark. It's good. Uh, you know, um, there's a really great overall soundscape to this. And what they've done is they've really capitalized on quietness. Many, many of these scenes are simply just two people talking on a, on a rooftop or something like that. And it's very, very effective when you combine action and quiet together there's a, there's a dynamic range that that makes each one more effective the batman movie has a great signature sound and that is the batmobile i think everybody agrees that the batmobile was a pretty great, great moment in the, in oh, the yeah. film it doesn't come into like 80 minutes in the movie but um it's still a, a great sound and every every kind of movie like this needs a signature sound or something that it says like, well, did you see this movie? The Batmobile sounds great. So they've really, they really accomplished one of my boxes I can cross for having a, a really good signature sound, a really, a really excellent car chase, really exciting, really well done. And, and then they've, they've also got a lot of quiet moments too. So overall it's a pretty good soundtrack. And I think students of sound would be wise to study this film and you can, you see how you can make an action movie quiet. It's pretty effective. Yeah, because when the action sequences are big, it's big, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah. They do have a lot of dull filters that they throw on things when, when things get really... It's an effect that is overused, um, and that is when somebody gets punched or something, all the sound gets dull. And... Oh, and it has that high ringing. Oh, they put in a tinnitus thing, which yeah, yeah. enjoys. <laughs> They do that a lot in, in Batman. They roll off so, some of the really more intense moments. They just roll off the high ends of the sound. And they get really sort of dull and, and muddy. And it's it's a choice, a stylistic choice. I just think it's cliche, um, but I, I think it's effective. But I, you know, mm -hmm. as a sound guy, it's like, it's like hearing stuff over and over again in different movies. And they do that a lot 
in a lot of movies and you'll see a lot of movies where an explosion will happen and everything gets really muffled and quiet and that's yeah that's sort of a good thing. i think they did that a couple once or twice in all quiet as well that i went oh there it is again they didn't no they removed sound so they featured oh you're right you're sound right. within a short distance of this guy you know and all the other sound just sort of went away so it was almost like it, it was very selective in what it was performing or showing us that's why I liked it a lot because it didn't resort to this sort of. I was waiting for a bomb to explode and then there'd be tinnitus and then yeah. they would have ringing ears and they didn't do any of that. Yeah. And so I was pleased. Yeah. All right. The fourth film on our list is Elvis, and the nominated team is David Lee, Wayne Pashley, Andy Nelson, and Michael Keller. Andy, two times this year. Yeah. Almost three times, but two times. <laughs> uh, no, I thought, uh, you know, story-wise, it was fine with me, but I thought this is one of my favorite movies of the year sound-wise. I think it was um, the way that the sound was used to really portray some of these moments, you know, I thought was fairly unique and, and interesting and kept me engaged. Uh, story-wise, you know, the story of Elvis is fine, but I liked the sound on this one. I liked the way that it drove the story forward and put you in the mindset of a lot of these people a lot of these moments for me it was very effective i'd like to see a category where we compare musicals sound wise yeah because uh as i said before a lot of people turn to us and say oh i like the sound of the movie you just worked on uh did that guy really sing and you go well yeah i mean that's sound for sure i mean the music is sound um i should know i mean Walk the Line got a BAFTA, and that's a musical. So um, I guess music is sound, but music is also music. So I don't know what I'm, what I, my point is here, except that when you're watching Elvis, uh, the sound is secondary to his performances, and it's very clever the way they've they've uh, juxtaposed events and they put sounds in, and they, but it's all within like a musical montage, mm -hmm. combining different like musical genres that lay on top of each other and segue into each other gospel and yeah. rock and you know it's very 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 effective very clever and uh, but it's, it's music i mean i mean there's 90 percent music so i did like a lot of the backgrounds though you know a lot of the backgrounds and it you know affects i just thought it was it was clever how they would pop in a lot of his you know, fans and the the backstage and the the guy across the town giving his hate speech and you know things like that where it was just yeah. bouncing all over. You know, <laughs> and at least for me, it brought me into the world going, oh, okay, this is more or less you know where he was, maybe where his mind was at the time. Right, but I'm going to suggest that it's more than fifty percent music you're listening to yeah. most of the time. So yeah, nothing wrong with that. No. I, I, I'm a, I'm a beneficiary of, of that, but, um, you know, it didn't have what I like to see in a movie, which is a signature sound. Maybe it was Austin mm. Butler's voice. Maybe that was the signature sound because a lot of people didn't believe he was singing. So well done, you know, mm -hmm. he really did pull it off. But, did he sing uh, on, on set on that one? Yes, he did. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. Amazing. And he did it so much that he couldn't stop talking like Elvis for a month or two. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I like I like this movie a lot. I think it's really a fun ride, and it's musically great and sonically super. I just wonder if because of it's mostly music, it would it could get knocked out of the park by somebody who's has a strong sonic, you know, effects track. Right. Wayne Pashley, who is the re-recording mixer, sound designer, and supervising sound editor, he was actually a guest on the show, and one of the things he shared is that they went out of their way to get authentic equipment to capture the sound going through the whole process when it finally comes to screen do you think that really carries through that effort up front you mean like like on the production side of it yeah i heard they had mic i had the vintage mics and uh, went to great lengths to have vintage recordings and things like that um which i think is fantastic i have to ask andy nelson that because he he makes that right yeah yeah, you have to ask Andy Nelson that because once you get these tracks into the console and they start mixing together, I don't know what he does to them. I'm I'm not supposed to know because he's going to be doing what each individual sound needs 
and he may EQ it, he may compress it. I don't know what he'll do. So yes, in one level, the, the basic tracks themselves, probably it's great to start with something that's authentic and reminds you of the era. But I don't know what Andy did with this, that stuff once he got it into the mix. I mean, once you sort of hear, you're going to hear like an orchestra or a band or something like that, that was recorded in another place, not with vintage microphones. So is it something you can EQ? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, fi I find it, you know, anytime I've attempted to do something super authentic on set, just to do the extra work up front. And then you, once the reality of shooting sets in, some older mics are not made for modern sets where everything is RF and everything is going crazy. And all of a sudden you plug something in, there's no shielding because back in the day there just wasn't, and you're just getting hums and buzzes and ticks and, you know, there, there but there are moments where you go, oh, you know, I'm glad I had something really running on the podium or so, so some of it is definitely worth it. Um, how much of it comes out at the end? It's, it, that's the trick. I think they were using the vintage mics when recording his music. I think that was probably wasn't used on set. Right. It was probably when he went to do his vocals and vintage music stuff, which could very well sound great. Maybe the soundtrack reveals it better than like a CD of the soundtrack. Remember CDs? Yeah, there's still CDs. There are. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've heard of them. <laughs> Now, with the sound category, it's your peers who review the shortlist and vote to determine the finalists. But the winner is decided by the Academy at large. In the line of what you said before, Don, about the mix of music and sound in a film like this, do you think the fact that this movie has a musical theme might lead some Academy voters to select it as the best for sound? What I think you're saying is, do people view this musical as sound rather than when asked what good sound is do they refer to musicals because they like the music and i'm going to say yes i think that many people say man that was a great sounding musical um it has the best sound because i like it had the best music i mean not other people will probably say that yeah i think i think the 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 honest is the, the nomination is by your peers which is great uh but the award goes to you know it's the general it's a wider audience of academy voters so i think you know, sometimes the award is, it, you know, everybody who's there nominated is there by the peers. But then at the end of the day, it's like, you know, maybe it was, you know, whoever, you know, Elvis created the best memory of, you know, the majority of the Academy members or, you know, or the, the fog of war or whatever it is. So I think it's always a grain of sand who wins, but it's always, you know, it's an honor to, you know, it's one of those things where it's like an honor to be nominated because it is, it's, your peers got you there, your work got you there. I think some of the some of the concerts in in the movie, which include crowds and sound effects mm -hmm. and things like that, are just great, fantastic. I mean, you're really like doing crowds is another thing, which uh, has to has to go with the music. So, mm -hmm. crowds are extremely uh, it's dialogue. It's basically dialogue with a, with a group of people, and you have to make sure that they're saying what you want them to say when they say it in the form of cheering and clapping and things like that. And, you know, uh, I did a period piece where they were had crowds in it, and we had to make sure they didn't shout out certain common phrases that are common today, but weren't common in the 50s. I mean, a good crowd, you, you, you don't notice a bad crowd is sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Just like, where, where is this crowd from? You know, so that's that's a massive amount of sound work in there. So, you know, yeah. I'm just going to temper what I said about musicals that I'm not trying to say musicals are are not good sound vehicles because what they bring with them all the crowds and all the venues and the places that they are and it, when he's playing in las vegas it sounds different than when he's playing in another place and it should and it's great and it's it, the crowd is amazing so i really i really think this is a great job and deserves to be on this list well our fifth and final film is top gun maverick and the team is mark weingarten james h mather al nelson Chris Burden and Mark Taylor. I mean, you know, it's a crowd pleaser. It's a sequel 30 years later. You know, it's a fun, it's a fun movie to, to watch when you like the original. Um, I love some of the internet um, theories on that. He actually dies right at the beginning when the Mach 10 hits and his plane explodes. And then the rest of the movie, it's his uh, redemption before heaven going through. 
<laughs> I didn't see that version. <laughs> <laughs> I just love, you know, some of the online theories are great. It's a know. theme that keeps coming up with this one. Yes. He can't die. What about Top Gun 3? <laughs> well, Top Gun 3, The Resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> Titanic 2. Anyway. No, I mean it's a great sounding movie. You know, it's it's uh, it had to be a blast to make that movie with the the in flight cameras and I would have loved to ask Mark how much of the the dialogue in the cockpit survived, you know, or was it all you know post recorded? <laughs> you think zero? I Don, think, zero. think zero. Yeah, I think zero. I think if I were if I was tasked with doing that, I think everything would be re recorded because frankly. Uh, I know the actors did, did a lot of this stuff in the, in their jets. I know it was recorded on the day, but it, it's such a noisy place. And yeah, when you're when you're pumping up that that dialogue among the jet sounds. You you need to have it clean. And also, uh, they didn't see their mouths moving, so they could say whatever you wanted. So you could change whatever you want from you know like I'm going into I'm going out important stuff like that. So I, yeah. I suspect that this was re-recorded, I, but I do think that this is a this was a perfect sort of it broke the pandemic it was one of the ones that made people get out of their house and go to movies and it was it was like the feel good film of the year and mm -hmm. had all the same songs fun to watch fun to listen to and it it didn't harm anybody it just it just basically you know big 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 character arcs you know and it's just a feel good movie and then it it, it helped because of the nostalgia that it effectively evoked. And um, it was just a good old fashioned film. And I think it deserves all the praise it can get. Yeah, it was a fun ride, sounded amazing. When, when you talked on about like the signature sound, you know, that's hard to find in, in that movie, but it's like, you know, it doesn't take away from the emotion of just watching it and having fun and, and having a, the, the general popcorn movie where it's just a fun movie to watch. Well, I think the Jets were, pretty much a signature sound. I mean, some of the takeoffs were um, delicious, you know. But but different from what you've heard in the past or new? It doesn't have to be different for me. It has to just ring true. And um, mm. and it just has to be effective. And and some of these jets actually had personalities. I mean, in my feeling. Uh, yeah, that's true. And it did. And it does ring true. It does, you know, feels it feels right. Nothing feels forced. Right. Yeah, it's good. I mean, when I say signature sound, I mean signature to the movie. I mean, this is the sound that you think when you hear the sound, you think, well, that was I heard that in the, in this movie. And I I think that these jets were there probably I think they're probably originally recorded. I think they went out and recorded a lot of these jets. And I think when you hear jets that are so well done, uh, you'll think of this movie. Yeah, true. Now, Steve, when you were here before and we talked about Ghostbusters Afterlife, there was this idea that the sounds of the original need to be present in the new version. That's part of the nostalgia. Either of you, do you think that there's a similar effort underway with Top Gun Maverick to revisit those sounds and to bring them up? Or are jet sounds so ubiquitous that the original sounds are not as relevant in this case? Well, I mean, I think you have some of the original music and some of the original you know, title sequence on the carrier all those things are you know lent to to make the audience feel like okay i know where i am so i think it does do that i think that that is the you know like anytime you have something like that where you've waited decades to see it you know i, I remember re, we remade a movie called fame that uh, you know i don't know 15 years ago uh from a, a movie that was made in the 80s and you know there was talk on set about not using the original song you know, fame in the movie it was like it was such like a crazy idea because i'm like no that's the, the if you want the audience to like you know get on board if you don't have that song you're gonna lose them like we ended up putting it i think at the end of the movie with the montage you know throughout the movie filming we would film you know after a big music sequence we'd play the song and we'd have a bunch of people dancing to it and it's like you gotta have that in the movie or else the audience is gonna walk out going oh, i feel cheated so i think that's the same you know, the same vibe that you have with, with Top Gun. If you didn't have the original songs in there and some of the original stuff, it's like, you know, what was the point? You know, you got to have the guy who's, you know, got the attitude and the sunglasses and chewing on a stick or else, you know, <laughs> you don't have the original characters. I think this movie was like uh, 
a tourist in Hollywood. I mean, everybody wants to see the sights, and they showed us all the sights. I mean, there is playing football on the beach. Yeah, check. You know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly um, doing the impossible pulling the g's um yeah. maybe the guy's gonna it's just like yeah this is perfect yeah. you know it's a perfect landing when behind enemy lines you don't do that <laughs> <laughs> but we do and then hey look you know we got the tomcat back we had to see that you know how are we gonna get that back and oh they happen to have one it works yeah. perfectly <laughs> just yeah it's fueled up ready to no, go it's got it's got clever written all over it it's really good. yeah it's and, perfect at no point do I think anybody is going to die. I mean, I, no. I don't want to give anything away to the guy out there who hasn't seen it. No, his girlfriend hasn't seen it. He's seen it. But this does remind me of Ford versus Ferrari on some level where they're not actually flying an F-14. Wait, what? Is there a unique sound to an F-14 that someone is recreating in, in post-on for something like this? Again, much like where the cars were not the actual engines from the time period in Ford versus Ferrari, right? Those are sounds that you brought in later because the original couldn't be captured on set. That's right. I'm going to say yes, that there is a F-14 sound. Um, and I'm going to say that maybe F-14 pilots are the ones that will tell you that's not an F-14 sound. I don't know if anybody else will. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't talk to these guys, but I'm pretty sure they were they were pretty accurate with these this equipment that they're using up there. So yeah, there's an F-14 and I'm not sure where they got them or what they did, but I'm, I'm pretty, I'm going to guess that it's pretty accurate. And I didn't ask to take anything away from the movie. I, I also enjoyed this film. I thought they nailed the assignment and it, uh, it delivered on uh, all engines, if you will, but <laughs> that's right. Nice. I like it. Nailed the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I'm going to tell my crew tomorrow. All right. Good day, guys. You nailed the assignment. <laughs> that's my favorite. All That's right, guys. Good. Well, those are our five. Are there any other 2022 films you thought were noteworthy or sound? Maybe something on the short list that didn't make it over or just other things that caught your ear? You mean besides Babylon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Babylon was an epic <laughs> movie. Didn't make this didn't make the list, but that's OK. And Steve, we're going to have you back to talk about Babylon because I do want to know. What was yeah. going on behind the scenes of that? Oh, we we have we have good stories on that one. We don't talk about stories. it. Don't talk about it. Oh, yeah, you're not <laughs> Come gonna, back and talk about it. You're not going to want to miss that episode. <laughs> we'll put that out as a teaser. <laughs> yeah, I will say because I won't be on that particular episode. I fear. Um, no, you can come back and give your. No, I, okay, all right. It's fine. It's fine. I don't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> Babylon was great. Very good under difficult circumstances. I'm I'm sure, and yeah. uh, it's really. A noteworthy film on many levels and the sound's certainly good so yeah congratulations yeah. that's great thanks i would actually like to nominate triangle of sadness i thought that was an amazing mm. founding film and i thought i thought the the idea of the ship slowly sinking over 15 minutes was pretty great um oh that's a spoiler but it is, oh jesus yeah I think the preview spoils that. So I, I think we're probably on the okay. same grounds there. Oh, okay, great. All right. okay. Well, as long as you put the spoiler in, a, in the beginning of the episode. Yeah. I like movies that have sound that are really storytelling components. And it, it just was hilarious. The sinking ship was hilarious. Just hilarious. <laughs> you, you've got the noise of the ship. You also have water issues there again, right? All of these sort of subtle sounds that are, to your point earlier, Don, transport someone to the location and, Make right. them feel like they're actually there. Which is my number one goal in any sort of a sound judgment is to say, does this, does this take me to a place where I, I either, do I know the sound? If, have I been there? And does it sound like that place? And if it does, great. But if it's a new place, like I could never have been like World War One. Yeah, who's to say? Yeah, it's like, that's even better for me. Yeah. You know, I really enjoyed all the films that were nominated this year. There, there's some years where I go, mm, I don't get that. But this year, I, I get it. I get all the films. They're fun. Uh, I mean, you know, to listen to. I'm mm -hmm. not saying the All Quiet on the Western Front was a fun family <laughs> movie, but um, but it was a, you know, I enjoyed each each one of these movies. All right. Well, on that note, we'll call it a wrap. Always informative to have you guys on the show. Are Thanks we gonna so much vote? for being here. <laughs> did, we, did we complete the assignment? <laughs> are, are, aren't we going to vote? Yeah, yeah. Put your, just, just hold up your fingers. I forget which foot are they were in. Oh, well, then your vote won't count. I'm going to vote. Can I vote? First of all, as an aside, <laughs> you don't want me saying what you actually are 
choose no. on the podcast. Is that oh, right? This is just for entertainment purposes. I was just trying to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll have to bleep out our vote. Once I've got through the south, <laughs> I can do anything I want with it. Yeah, Doc, I'm curious. What are you guys going for? I can't tell you now. <laughs> yeah, well, that's okay. embarrassing. You guys ready to move on? <laughs> I don't want to. I want to give room for everybody's gibberish, and I'll fix it in post so there's yeah, everybody right. gets, their, gets their say. But <laughs> well, I don't you know, want to catch that's all we do. Yeah. That's why we're it. here. I love it. Listeners, I always appreciate your feedback. You'll find my contact info at our website, blowthelineoneword.biz. That's B-I-Z. We're now halfway through our Oscar coverage, and I hope we've earned your subscription. Thanks to Curtis Five for our music and John Juan for our logo. The logo is available on T-shirts, mugs, and stickers at redbubble.com. To all of our listeners, I appreciate you. Please rate us wherever you get your podcasts and tell your friends. Thanks again from Below the Line.